Hello, everyone. My name is Alexa, and I paint on people. And I turn them into what looks like a two-dimensional painting. So this is just paint, a brush, and a human to create this illusion. There's no digital effects or any post-processing necessary. From every possible angle, this 3D painting will look like it is two-dimensional. Um, so it's pretty analog, but there also oftentimes is a little bit of magic sprinkled in. There's also at times a mathematical element to my work. I'd presented at a previous G4G these tessellating tiles um, that are based on a concept called curves of constant width, where each edge length of the tile is the arc from the circle of the same radius. And so everything fits into each other really beautifully and tessellates out. Um, at the G4G that I brought these before and let people play with them, I did not bring this prototype that's my favorite because it would be inappropriate here, and that's bath toys. It'd be a little awkward for people to play with at the conference, <laughs> but they make bath time really fun. And it's really important to me that art be fun for everyone. I mean, art is for humans. Why not make things that speak to them? So when I do an interactive installation exhibit like this, I'll have painted clothes and set pieces that people are able to touch and be part of the artwork. And that's for everyone, including children who might come to my exhibit. I noticed a lot of families were coming to my show, so I wanted to make sure there were toys to keep the kids occupied. <laughs> I had this amazing opportunity to take over a 14,000 square foot space in the heart of Midtown Manhattan, and I knew that to create the ultimate and a playful art experience, I would want to use Alice in Wonderland as my base um, inspiration. So I took all of these scenes from the classic story and made it something that you could travel through. So to enter this show, one way is to go through the rabbit hole and then through the looking glass and on to explore more of the world of Alice very physically. This also includes the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, the psychedelic Cheshire Cat experience. And everything is completely interactive, including the human-sized hamster wheel. So inside of this illusion, there is a round wheel that's painted that as you walk on it or spin, the illusion then starts spinning with you. Um, in this installation, there are three cubes that are 3D that this man has climbed on top of that have been painted to blend in with the back wall on the floor. And then, of course, costumes for all the visitors. There's other Alice favorites in the show, like these tiny houses, because there's a scene in the story where Alice grows so large she can no longer fit inside the home. I also played with scale with the playing cards. There's a giant card house that you can climb on top of and build your own giant card houses. I painted a lot of cards for this exhibit, and I ended up just mass producing them at a certain point. So this is a deck of cards where I'd hand painted all of them, and the idea was that visitors to the show would be able to go home with their own deck of cards for free, or included in the price of admission, but close enough. <laughs> So unfortunately, there was an issue with this plan because the show was scheduled to open March 13th, 2020. <laughs> we had the press preview March 12th. Everything was done, finished, amazing. Um, but turns out March 13th was the day that we went into lockdown. And so the doors of the show were never able to open, even though it was fully finished. And I had to go home and send my team home. We had spent many months together working you know, 18-hour days on building out this experience, and we thought we'd just be home for two weeks. We didn't realize it was 2020, and logic works differently during that year. So while I was at home waiting for my show to reopen, I decided as part of my work from home was to figure out ways that I could remotely contribute to this art exhibit. And I returned back to the source material of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And I thought, well, maybe for the gift shop, I'll create my own book. And so I set out to make my own interpretation of it in book form. I took together the original text of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass and annotated it into my own story. And I included images from the exhibit with painted quotes on them from Lewis Carroll as my own version of the book. And you'll notice that on these images, I have painted words. Initially, when I had this concept, I thought that I would hand paint all of the words on the images. And then I realized that that would be really time consuming. If I want to make it changes, I couldn't. And so I decided to work smarter and not harder, and just came up with making digital fonts. So I painted out probably 20 different alphabets and then um, made them something that I could be digitally typing with them. 
And then of course, to test them out, I wanted to create pangrams, you know, like the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And my boyfriend came up with this one, which I really liked. Font wizard Alexa, high jumps quickly. Bravo. <laughs> I, I used to aspire to be a pole vaulter, so this is also personally meaningful. So if any of you want to impress your girlfriends or boyfriends, make a pangram that speaks to their personal passions. <laughs> so thank you, Stefan. <laughs> Um, and then my favorite font that's in the book is this one. And it's really special to me because it is not my handwriting. It's actually Lewis Carroll's. I went through to the original manuscript of Alice's Adventures Underground, and I picked out representative letters from it. Um, here you can see that I picked out 17 different A's in capitals and lowercase because I wanted to find the perfect letter that could represent um, style, that could represent all of them in my font. And you might be wondering, like, do I have a life? Like, <laughs> what? And I could say, I live for this. This is awesome and fun. Um, also, welcome to the pandemic. But anyways, like 100 very enjoyable hours later, I came up with my font. And so I'm able to write anything in Lewis Carroll's handwriting. And if any of you would like to be able to do that too, I am happy to share with you it all. Um, anyway, I use this font throughout the book, and in this particular passage, um, I love this Lewis Carroll quote. Still she haunts me phantom-wise, Alice moving under skies, never seen by waking eyes. And it turns out, several months after I'd completed this book, I found out that my exhibit was not able to open. We had to give up the lease on the space, because 2020. So this whole Wonderland experience and this book never ended up seeing the life of day, light of day. And I really hope at some point when we're out of the pandemic era, for real, to be able to bring it back and share it with the world. In the meantime, I have found a home from it, for it in my personal home. My house is something that I've transformed into a fun house. That's a completely separate talk. <laughs> but in the meantime, as I continue to try to find more homes for this Alice in Wonderland exhibit, I ended up bringing it to Art Basel um, in the form of projection mapping. I collaborated with the Temple House on creating this interactive projection mapping exhibit specific for Art Basel. And there's something I realized in the process of doing this is that the story of Alice is so timeless. It can be adapted to all sorts of new technology. And it's something where really Alice just never ages. And I wanna say thank you so much to this whole community for welcoming me into part of it. Because I mean, I see all of us bringing forward this spirit of Lewis Carroll, Martin Gardner, and just the joy and beauty of mathematics and art and magic together. So thank you for having me.